What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today I'll be reviewing a beer from JW Lees and Company and they are out of Manchester, England over in the UK and this is their Harvest Ale, the 1986 yeast variant and this is the 2021 limited edition. So this is an English barley wine that comes in at 10.5% alcohol by volume, 25 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this bottle is, but it does have a best before date of April of 2027. And we're just over four years away from that date. So we should be more than fine. And the Harvest Ale and all of its uh, variants and uh, releases and whatnot, they usually can age extremely well. So on the back here, they say, to celebrate the 35th anniversary of our legendary high risk sale, we've taken some of our 2021 edition wort and fermented it with the yeast cultured from an original 1986 bottle. This method has added a unique complexity from this historic yeast that will continue to evolve as it matures and they have ingredients, water, malted barley, yeast, and hops, the core four. And yeah, I have not reviewed a beer from JW Lee's on the channel, but I've had numerous um, different variants and releases of the Harvest Ale. Calvados Barrel, probably my favorite. And uh, I just thought this was fun because this is like one of the newer ones to show up. And I was like, that's really cool. 1986 yeast. And uh, yeah, I'm here for it. So let's pour it into the tulip and see what we got going on here. So. so I would say this is like relatively fresh, all things considered. This is also a smaller bottle like most of theirs are. This is what? Uh, 9.3 fluid ounces for 275 milliliters. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that looks like an English barley wine, albeit maybe a little bit lighter, but probably appropriate on camera, just in person, a little bit lighter. It has this beautiful like burnt orange color, had about a finger or maybe like a half finger of an off-white uh, colored head that is now dissipated to a thin film. Definite alcohol sheets there all the way to the brim. And uh, yeah, it has some clarity to it. Not crystal clear, but you can see through it a decent amount. A decent amount, And it does have very fine particulates in there. So let's get a nose. <sighs> it smells beautiful. So yeah, it's small. It smells. It smells super malt forward like these beers typically are, especially in the English um, barley wines. It has this really beautiful like orange peel, orange marmalade kind of scent. But then you're getting, you know, big caramel and toffee and like toasted, very slightly toasted, like white bread. But yeah, caramel toffee, some like apricots, like lighter stone fruits as well. Oh, it smells beautiful. The reason why I love English barley wines, uh, especially when they're barrel aged, and this isn't barrel aged, it's just, you know, just a normal English barley wine, although, you know, they're doing some cool methods. Um, I just love how the malt character plays typically with whatever barrel that it ages in. That's why, to me, when people ask me, like, what my favorite style is or one style that I, you know, think is the best or my favorite, and it's always English barley wines, but typically barrel aged English barley wines. I just love English barley wines, and I love barrel aged or, like, old ales. I just love the malt complexities, and I just think they play extremely well with a lot of different barrels. A touch of, like, a vanilla, too. Maybe butterscotch. I'm starting to get like, like just straight on toffee, just like pure on toffee. And I just love toffee and it just smells like toffee. Yeah, it, listen, it smells a little boozy. This is relatively fresh, I would assume, is one of the latest releases, especially that we've gotten here in the US. But it just smells like an extremely well made English barley wine. Like there's a ton of malt complexity, maybe a little bit of like an earthy hop note. But more often than not, you can tell the difference between an English barley wine and an American barley wine. Why? Because American barley wine is hop to piss. English barley wines are not. Yeah, this smells awesome. Uh, maybe even a little bit of like a like a red apple too, like a like a caramel covered apple. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I would love to see this in a barrel. And again. A lot of the harvest sales are in a bunch of different barrels, but like this specific beer that I just took a sip of, like, man, it would be great in a bunch of different bar barrels for sure. It's just, it's fucking good. I don't tell you. Body's like lower side of full, low to medium full. It has a slight oily kind of syrupy kind of nature to it. So it's appropriate for 10.5%. It's not overblown, but I also don't think it's too thin. Really nice. 
Uh, the mouthfeel itself has some decent carbonation. But it's like mild to moderately carbonated, like smack dab in the middle. So there is carbonation to let you know this is an English brown wine. It's a beer. But it has a nice smoothness on the palate that, and a little bit of a softer kind of feel to it. The taste. It's malt through and through, and that's kind of what you expect from these beers. From the palate, again, it's that toasted white bread. Um, orange marmalade on toasted white bread. But then... The marmalade itself is maybe not just orange. Maybe there's a apricot jam on there. Uh, there's a bunch of different fruity characteristics. As it passes through, there's more of a toffee than caramel that hits me. It's a, like straight on, like just beautiful toffee notes. Maybe a little bit of a molasses, but more toffee than anything. Halfway through the palate, red apple core, touch of a pear. And as it finishes on the palate, there's a nice semi-dry kind of finish. Very mildly bitter. This definitely leans sweet. Like, if you don't like sweet English barley wines, then I, you probably won't. Put it this way. If you don't like the barley wine style, you're probably not going to pick this up. But if you did, you probably wouldn't like it because this is like an English barley wine through and through. And it's sweet. It's decadent from the malt. You know, I was going to say standpoint, but like the malt side of things shining through on this one. There's not a ton of like hop character. There's like a slight earthiness on the on the finish. Very mild bitterness from it. But this is just a beer that, again, like they said, it's going to mature. That you know, five years from now, it's going to be a completely different um, beer. I shouldn't say completely, but there's going to be differences to it. And then ten years from now, probably be a completely different beer. It's going to change. But fresh, this is just really tasty, really delicious. It's not as complex as maybe I was thinking. Maybe the complexity from the fruit notes or something that um, is sh shining through it right now. But as is, like 10.5% is there warming in my chest? Sure. Is there anything on the palate? No. Do I know this is a bigger beer? I do. But there's no astringency. There's nothing harsh about this beer whatsoever, especially if you like English brownie wines. I'm glad I picked this up. Huge uh, shout out to Kenny over at Premier Gourmet, one of my favorite local bottle shops in Amherst, New York. He was like, hey, that's going to show up next week. If you want a bottle, let me know. And I did, and then I came in, and he was like, yeah, came in, here we go. So, you know, I got to review more from J.W. Lee's because, again, I've had numerous different vintages of Harvest Ale, uh, different barrels from them, but I've never reviewed anything just because, I don't know. I just, like I said, I'm trying to review more imported beers, trying to do at least one a week. This is the one for this week, and I'm really happy I picked this one up. Um, it just has a classic English barley wine feel to it, and I'm here for it, so... Harvest Ale, the 1986 yeast variant, and this is the 2021 limited edition from J.W. Lee's. I have no issues whatsoever giving this one a straight 4.5 out of 5. This is just a really good, well-made English barley wine. Whether or not they're uh, using a yeast cultured from a 1986 bottle um, or you know they just took the war from a 2021 edition, whatever, they usually know what they're doing, and this just hits the marks for me. This is kind of a no-frills English barley wine. Uh, what you see is what you get, and I could not be happier about it. So price point, again, it's imported at 10.5%. They're doing some crazy things. Um, this was $7.99 a bottle, so still under my $1 per ounce kind of limit that I try to, uh, the threshold that I try not to surpass at any point, but sometimes I do. And yeah, 8 bucks for this bottle. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. I have no issues paying 8 bucks for this. Some folks out there might think so, but like for me, it's good value. And availability, I don't know with uh, JW Lee's. I know there's some places you'll walk in to uh, across the country where they have a crazy variety and then other places where you can't even find it. I know here in Buffalo at the aforementioned Premier Gourmet, you walk in, they have like 10 different varieties of them typically. Like they have all kinds of different years, um, different barrels and whatnot. And this was just the latest that showed up. So if you've had this one before, post in the comment section, let me know what you uh, think about it. Um, yeah, I'm going to shut it down. Now, as I'm sitting here, you know what I'm kind of getting on the, on the finish? Take a sip. Yeah, I'm getting like a slight like butterscotch kind of aftertaste. That's really nice. So, yeah, going to shut it down. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another a beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I did, I, you know, I mentioned the sweetness. This is definitely, it has a big malt sweetness. But to me, there's a difference between something like this where... There's a big malt sweetness. And by the end of that glass, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm probably done with it, you know? So like a nightcap type of thing. But there's a difference between this and then something that's cloying to the point where it's just like too sweet, like a lot of pastry stouts can get. There is a difference to me, something that is meant to be like this and the malt is providing all that sweetness and something else where like all the adjuncts provide the sweetness. Um, I think some folks think like this might be too sweet and it might be for some, but this is sweet in the best way possible as far as a beer goes for me personally. So just want to 
let that be known. Anyway, to the next one. Cheers.